dark flame of the Amazon, featuring Harold Noyce, world-famous explorer in person. Remember, in the last chapter, little Jean and Jim Brady, just using a little good old ingenuity, managed to outwit the Indian guard that Grogan had placed to watch the plane in which Pat Donovan, the pilot, was imprisoned, bound and gagged. It was a brave thing to do. But boys and girls of today are willing to try almost anything, no matter how difficult, just so they can be of help. And they often can help. Mr. Noyce doesn't know yet about the stunt they pulled. Neither does the scoundrel Grogan. But he will, don't you worry. He's going down to that airplane before long, and he's in for about the biggest surprise he ever had in his whole life. Jimmy and Jean are with Donovan now, all three of them hurrying to pull the water-soaked Indian into the cabin of the plane, and then for more plans, plans that may make Grogan squirm and wish he had never entered the jungle. But let's listen. You know, Pat, about all I've done since I came into this terrible country is get soaking wet. Gosh, I've been in and out of rivers so often, I'm beginning to feel like a sardine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly was a mighty fine stunt you two pulled. Begore, I could hardly believe my own eyes when I saw Jean here come into the cabin. And I'll never be forgetting that. But didn't you hear us? Didn't you sort of suspicion that something was up? Gosh, it seemed like Jean and I made a whole lot of noise down there in the water. Well, maybe you thought so because you were so tense your nerves were on edge. And no wonder. Every little sound must have listened like a big noise. No, I never heard a sound until that Indian yelled. And did he yell, though? I was listening for Jimmy to give me the high sign. But I didn't hear him at all. Just the Indian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to yell, too. But the dirty cloth that Grogan had over my mouth, well, it just wouldn't let me. Well, one thing, Pat, you sure didn't lose much time getting out into the water after you did get free. I'll say. Why, Pat, you still had cause of rope around you when you died. Yes, but not enough to hinder me, though. And I knew that Jimmy needed me help. <laughs> I'll say I did. That Indian just wouldn't quit struggling, remember? Yes, yes. Well, now it seems to me that the first thing we do is put some more rope around this gazebo here. We got his wrists and feet tied, but it isn't enough. You know, them Indians are slippery customers, and don't you be forgetting it. Well, here's some pieces of rope. Too bad I had to cut it up so badly when I set you for you. Oh, never mind that, Miss Jean. So we'll just use a few more pieces here and put them where they'll do the most good. Then let's all get to work. We'll all tie some knots. Well, now, Miss Jean, I wonder if he'd leave that to Jimmy and me here. Uh, we need someone to keep watch out there. Uh, could you be getting up to the little cabin window now and watch the riverbank? Oh, yes. You know, I'm thinking Grogan will be paying us a visit pretty soon. Yeah, and when that happens, we've got to be all set to welcome him and make him sort of feel at home and how. All right. Just leave the window watching to me. I'm swell at that. I had a lot of experience lately. But, gee, I sure do wish I had some dry clothes, though. Say, Pat, uh, how about you taking care of this Indian? I mean, you can do all the tying yourself. Well, Begori, and it's the one thing I'm good at. But uh, what do you want to do? Well, I got some little important things to do here. 
First, I want to get our spare guns and ammunition from the locker. Say, will you look at this? The locker's empty. Not a gun, not even a cartridge left. Yes, I could have told you that. I lay here flat on my back, all tied up, helpless, while Grogan went through the locker and took every gun and bullet. Well, what did he do with them? Surely he didn't throw them to the river, Pat. No, no, he handed them out the door to Indians in a canoe. And you know, I'm thinking maybe they're up in the village somewhere. Oh, gosh, Jimmy. That about ruins all our plans. Mr. Norris needs a gun, and so does Pedro. Well, and so do I. But we'll have to do the next best thing. I don't know what that's going to be at all, at all. Oh, I guess we're licked. Licked good and (laughs) sopper. Oh, no, we're not. And don't say it, Jean. We're not licked yet. Not by a long shot. Now, Jimmy, look. Uh, Where is this Scroggins man, Brogan's partner? Have you seen him? I'll say we saw him. Mr. Norris laid a swell trap for him, and he fell for it, too. He fell like a load of bricks. But that guy's dumb as they make him, Pat. Maybe Scroggins is, but not Grogan. No, sir, Pat. Grogan was behind the hut listening to Mr. Norris fix things up with Scroggins. And Grogan didn't waste any time. You mean Grogan heard Scroggins trying to put over a double cross? Yes, sir. He, he sure did. And what happened to Scroggins? Well, we don't exactly know, but when Scroggins went out of the door of the hut, it happened. To Scroggins? Something happened to Scroggins? Yes. Yeah. Grogan had it already arranged before he came into the hut. Oh, he must have had a flock of big Indians waiting outside there. Oh, so that's how the land lay. Grogan had his Indians pounce on Scroggins, eh? <laughs> I'll say they did. You should have heard Scroggins yell, too. It didn't sound so good, either. Well, then Scroggins must be a prisoner in the village somewhere. <laughs> Anyone else but Grogan would have used a gun or a spear. But that method is too swift for Grogan. He likes to see his enemies suffer. And I suppose it's the anthill for Scroggins, too. Well... Mr. Norris and Pedro are going to have company, it seems. Oh, no, they're not. Not if we can do anything about it, Jean. And it's certainly up to us, too. Well, now, if you two have any plans, no matter how impossible they may appear, uh, let me hear them. I'm with you to the finish. You know, I still got me two fists and I can use them. Well, that's one of the reasons we swam out to this plane and got you loose, Pat. We can't do much without you. We've got one chance, Pat, and it's just one. Scroggins hit his automatic under his bedroll in his hut. That's certain, because we saw him hide it there. Yes. He came out with his holster empty. Oh, then you think we could maybe sneak into the village and get hold of that gun? Well, maybe we can, Pat, but it isn't going to be so easy. You see, Jean and I already tried it. We found some Indians there, though. Oh, yes, Pat, and they hollered at us. I guess they were telling us to get out and stay out. It sounded like it. Yes. Well, then Scrogan's is a, is a prisoner in his own hut. That's why the Indians were there. And whereabouts is this hut where Mr. Noyce and Pedro are being kept? Well, it's almost directly across the street. We sat in the hut with Mr. Noyce and watched Scroggins when he went to hide his gun. That's why we know that it's almost directly across, see? Mm. Well, how about coming up behind the hut, then, from among the trees? Well, that's the only way it can be done. But Grogan warned Jimmy and me that he had Indian guards all over the place. Oh, guards, eh? Well, now, that makes it more difficult. But for them, we could make it. Uh Uh-oh. Them Indian drums are making more noise up there in the village than I ever heard before. Yeah, it's the beginning of the celebration, Pat. Uh, Grogan explained it, and so did Mr. Noyce. The anthill stuff is supposed to take place tomorrow, and tonight they celebrate the occasion. Well, then look now. If the Indians get going on this celebration, and they get all hot and bothered, maybe the guard will let down a little. You mean that we might be able to do something when the dance is going full blast? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe with all the noise and the drums and the shouting and the yelling, we can slip in quietly, even though we have to dress up like Indians to fool them. (laughs) Well, count me in on that, Pat. I guess that goes for me, too. Well, very good. Now, this big red man here, I guess we got him nicely taken care of. He isn't going to get out of these ropes, and he won't be able to yell through all that bunch of rags. Oh, gosh. If Grogan should come down here now, maybe we could grab him. Oh, say, I just noticed something out there. A little canoe, a kind of dugout almost hidden in the bushes, right across from here. Where? where? Oh, yes. Oh, that's the canoe that Grogan used to bring me out here. Now, if he comes back, he'll paddle out. I don't think he likes to swim so very well. Well, Now, listen, Pat, and you too, Jimmy. How about trying the stunt Mr. Norris advised? What stunt? Oh, oh, you mean the one about trying to swing the ship around? Yes, why not? We got a swell chance now. Swing the old bus around? You mean and get ready to take off again? Sure. 
Mr. North advised us to do that, to get into the air as quickly as possible, head down the river, and warn the Brazilian authorities. But listen, Pat, we can't do it. We can't leave here without Mr. Noyce and Pedro. Well, I'm thinking you're right, Jimmy, my boy. But while there's life, there's hope, and we still got a good kick or two left in us. But now listen. Uh, maybe we should turn the nose of the plane around. Have her ready just in case we do succeed, eh? But what if Grogan comes back down here and sees the plane turned around? He'll be on his guard. He'll know that something's special. Say, that's right. Gosh, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, Miss Jean, we leave the ship sitting right where she is. Plenty of time to get it twisted around when we get Grogan where we want him. Well, but what about when Grogan gets down here and finds his Indian guard has disappeared? Isn't he going to be kind of suspicious? Well, I thought of that too, Miss Jean, but we'll just have to chance it. You know, he may think that the Indian has left his post to join in the festivities in the village. Well, at least we hope he'll think so. Uh, say, Pat, could you handle Grogan alone? Or, or maybe if Jean stayed with you, the two of you. Oh, but what about you, Jimmy? Where do you think you're going? I'm going up to the village. Look, Jean, you remember that box of stuff I brought with me? That stuff that Uncle said was just excess baggage? Oh, you mean all the duplicates, the tricks and things? Sure. Well, how about me going up to the Indian ceremonial, and when the old witch doctor starts strutting his stuff, I'll get going too. But I can make his hair stand on end. Oh, oh no, no. That's too risky to do it alone, Jimmy. Now, if I went along with you and Miss Jean, well, I'd be all for it, but... Uh, Say, uh, Pat, if I once got going good... That bunch of superstitious Indians would be more scared than I would. What do you say? Okay, would you? Well, I don't know. You know, I feel kind of responsible for the two of you until Mr. Noyce gets free. Uh, but uh, what about the things you mentioned? What are the stunts you want to pull? Oh, just little tricks. But if I can fool the kids back home with them, think what can be done with that bunch of Indians. Say, when I get through, they'll have nightmares. And every night in a week, too. They'll be so scared they won't even go out of doors. Well, it sounds kind of good to me. Wait, hold everything. Somebody's coming. Broken, I'll bet. Gosh, we're in luck, Pat. And it's just getting dark enough, too. Maybe we can fool him. Look, you see him? Coming down the trail from the village. Yeah. Just one man. Wait till he gets nearer. That clump of trees, the big ones to the left. Do you see him now? Come on, Pat. Let's get to our battle station. Things are going to pop in a big way, and soon, too. Things are going to pop. Is it Butch Grogan coming down the path? Will he cross in the little canoe? What will Donovan and the children do without a weapon, and will the coming darkness cover their actions? Big things will happen in the next episode of The Black Flame of the Amazon. <laughs> 